everybody. Welcome on board. It's my pleasure now to welcome you to this very first IE breakfast uh, on the webinar mode. As you may see, there is no pastries. We have a great guest, and now it's my pleasure to welcome you on this online version of the Council of Europe IE uh, breakfast. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome you with Juliette Lelier, and I will let Juliette introduce our experts today. Juliette, the floor is yours. Good morning, Yannick. Thank you very much for the floor, and I'm happy that we are um, continuing our breakfast on artificial intelligence and law on this way. I'm very happy to present uh, three experts this morning. Um, our first expert is Michael Veal. He's a lecturer in digital rights and regulation at University College of London. His research sits at the intersection of emerging digital technologies, internet and data law, technology policy, and human computer interaction. Thank you very much, Michael, for being with us this morning. Our second expert is from Italy, Dino Pedreschi. Um, Dino Pedreschi is a professor of computer science at University of Pisa. He is a pioneering scientist in mobility data mining, social network mining, and privacy preserving, preserving data mining. He has recently contributed um, together with other researchers to a manifesto called Give More Data Awareness and Control to Individual Citizens, and they will help COVID-19 containment. Thank you very much, Dino, for being with us. And our third expert is uh, Adrien Badvan from France. He's a lawyer, member of the Paris Bar. He focuses on data protection, cyber criminality, and emerging technologies. He defends civil liberties in the information society, which is very important at the moment, and advises numerous startups. He is the author of a very good book, L'Empire des Données, and he is generally speaking working at the intersection of law, technology, and policy. I would like to thank you very much, all three of us, for being with us this morning. And uh, I'll give uh, the floor back to Yannick. Yes, uh, thanks a lot, Juliette. And it's also my, my pleasure to welcome uh, three colleagues that will ask a question to our expert. The first one is Sophie Kwasny, Head of Data Protection Unit. We will have also the two co-secretaries of our, our ad hoc committee on artificial intelligence, uh, Livia Stoica and Clementina Barbaro. Uh, they uh, will uh, ask to the expert uh, some uh, questions. Uh, and we will have also with us uh, two directors, Claudia Luciani, it's my pleasure to welcome her on this recording, and also uh, Jan Kleisen, uh, who is uh, also director at the Council of Europe, and uh, Patrick Penanx uh, will conclude with uh, Claudia at this high breakfast. Uh, maybe, um, Juliette, uh, we, we can begin now this high breakfast. Yes, I think um, we are ready to start. So um, to begin, I will give the floor to our two directors at the Council of Europe, Claudia Luciani and um, Jan Kleisen. Great. Just to say, uh, at this stage, I would rather leave space for the debate. So it's my pleasure to welcome you very much and come back maybe later with, with questions. I prefer to leave uh, the room for the, for the interventions and, uh, and see what, uh, at later stage, what can be more relevant. Thank you, and uh, welcome to everyone. Jan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy I can be with you, if only virtually. Uh, thank you to Juliette and, and uh, Yannick for the organization, as always. Thank you very much uh, to the experts for being with us. Uh, grazie mille, thank you very much indeed. We live in an extraordinary period, and it is also clear that we're all worried. You're worried, we're worried, everyone is worried. We're worried about our health, we're worried about our families, 
but we're also worried about the consequences of this period for our societies, um, for our democracies, for our fundamental rights, and of course also for the economic stability of our societies. It is therefore also entirely natural that people look for solutions, um, be it a medical solution, a vaccine, a treatment, or anything else that can help us fight or beat this virus, and pending, pending that, anything that can help us return to some degree of normal living together again. So it's also entirely natural that people look to technology, uh, AI, uh, algorithms, they have a magical ring about them to many people, they're very promising, there's a lot of hype, and uh, of course the media uh, broadcast almost daily examples of parts of the world where artificial intelligence, uh, technological solutions generally, and in particular also tracking uh, apps in this case, are used uh, and reportedly often with some degree of success in, in making it possible uh, to get out of isolation and to return to some degree of, of normality. But even in extraordinary times, when extraordinary measures may be necessary, we should be very careful not to believe immediately that a technical solution is the solution and that technology somehow provides us with a silver bullet to win this fight. It is therefore very important that before we start using technology and especially on an unprecedented scale uh, and with possibly unprecedented effects on our democratic system, on our values, that we make a very, very good analysis of what is, what is needed and what technology can do. It's extremely important. And that is, there was a, there was a letter addressed by a, a very broad mix of international scientists, many of them based in the Netherlands, to the Dutch government uh, that you may have come across. It was widely shared on, on social media, notably. Um, uh, the scientists come from virtually every uh, field. Uh, there, there are medical doctors, there are computer scientists, sociologists, anthropologists, you name it. And they addressed a letter to the Dutch government, uh, which is among other governments, also considering the introduction of a tracking app, drawing attention to a number of, of, of risks. And they also quite rightly point out, and I will not abuse my time to go through the whole document, but I would strongly recommend it, and perhaps afterwards we can provide a link, there's an English version of this, a link to our, our participants in this breakfast. Um, the question zero. Question zero is, can technology do what it is claimed to do? Is it at all possible to contain the spread of the virus through, for instance, tracking apps? I leave it, of course, to the experts uh, and to this, to this debate to, to provide questions to this. Uh, but I think it is the fundamental first question, uh, rightly, I think, labeled question zero. Then a whole series of other questions. If that question were to be uh, answered in the affirmative, in the sense that tracking could provide at least a partial solution to uh, uh, spreading, to fighting the spread of the virus, a whole series of other considerations come into play, which also have to be very carefully analyzed. Um, data protection is a very obvious one, the right to privacy, but is also the right to, to freedom of association, the right to freedom of movement, the right to health, and of course, anti-discrimination. Uh, initial examples have already pointed out that there may well be discriminatory or stigmatizing effects of, of uh, tracking technology being, loose, being used. As I said, I'll leave it to the experts, but I would like to finish uh, with one observation. Um, I had the occasion recently to, uh, last weekend, share an article on, on Twitter written by an American uh, colleague about the digital divide and tracking, and I think that is extremely important. Because even if we manage to develop an app that does the job, that does respect fundamental rights, we must be very much aware that not everyone has a mobile phone, has a smartphone, and not everyone has access to the internet. So uh, even if all the questions were to answer in the affirmative, let us make sure that what is a constitutional right in very few countries, and I think Finland is in Europe one of the very few countries that I think has the constitutional right of access to internet, that we provide that. 
and the current, if the current crisis has shown anything, uh, it has certainly shown how important it is that people can be online uh, for their work, uh, to stay in touch with loved ones, and possibly also to be safe when this app, uh, where this app ever to be to be rolled out. Thank you very much. I look very much forward to the debate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan Kleisen, for this very substantial introduction. I think uh, the direction has been set up. And now we can turn to our experts. So I will first give the floor to Michael Veal. We are very happy to hear you. Michael, you have the floor. <laughs> 